Hey there guys, how's it going? Hope you're keeping really well. I've had a lot of equipment coming through the observatory just recently and today <laughs> there's another fine piece here. Now in this box is a TubeTech IMX571 based camera. I love these sensors as do many other astronomers out there and this happens to be one of the most cost effective ways of getting your hands on this technology. So what we're going to do today is by no means going to be an exhaustive video as we simply don't have any clear skies right now. But what we are going to do is open this up, take a look at the package on the whole. I'll give you my first impressions, basically go through an unboxing. And then we're going to try and hook it up to Nina, see how the connectivity is for just out of the box experience for anybody looking purchasing these things. I think that's an important point to touch upon. And then I'm also going to give you a just a very basic test for power consumption when given a standard task such as cooling 20 degrees below ambient as I think that's representative of what most people need to do with these. These IMX 571s certainly don't need extremely deep cooling. All right guys, so let's just jump straight in and take a look at this thing. I have to say I'm really impressed to see that it comes well packaged in this little Pelican case. Um, I wish more Camin Raphael shows. We're doing this because these cameras are so expensive, you know. Um, we really need to be able to look after them properly when they're not in use. So top marks to TubeTech right there for actually giving us a good way to look after the camera. Uh, let's take a look at what comes. So as you can see, it's the much larger style USB port on the camera itself, unlike the perhaps more commonly found these days, USB-C on some of the cameras, uh, which I happen to really like. But I know a lot of people prefer this kind of connector as it's simply larger and a little bit more chunky. But I think that's a personal taste thing. Both work absolutely fine. Here we have a M42 male to M42 female 21 mil, a M42 male to M48 female 16 and a half mil, and in the back a M48 male on the outside, female M42 on the inside adapter ring, which is actually a good bit wider than a standard adapter ring, I think. A few more mil deep. Uh, no special significance to that, but I just thought I'd point it out. The insides are fairly shiny, uh, I do say. So you may have some issues with reflections on very bright objects, perhaps, but no worse than I've seen on some other brands. So nothing much to report right there. One other thing that TubeTech do provide as well as this nice case is a power supply which is another fantastic thing well done tube tech this one is hunt key branded if i'm not mistaken which i'm not exactly familiar with but it's there it's provided for you there is a three pin uk plug which is what i would requested when tube tech sent this thing over and also appears to be a if i'm not mistaken m40 two male let's just try this real quick yep it's m42 male uh, another nose piece adapter so let's take a look at the camera itself i'll just slide this out of the way a second just comes in this bag and uh, the finish actually is really nice i have to say it looks better in person i mean it looks good in a picture but in person it's a very nice satisfying blue so um yeah good to see now on the back we have a usb hub awesome stuff they are so handy to have on your camera it makes wiring things up just way easier um that usb port that we talked about a dc12 import which is 5.5 by 2.1 if i am not mistaken yeah, very nice, solid port, no wiggles. Ah, a power light, a system light, thermoelectric cooler light, and one that I think should say fan, but it seems to be blanked over by a little sticker, interestingly. Not sure what that's all about. Uh, let's try these other ports for fit. So the USB itself, very nice, well installed. On the board, you know, there's no creaking. The hub sockets, yeah, I'm happy with those. You know, they're going nowhere. They're uh, they're well held on the camera. Now on the front hand side, looks like we have. 
we're gonna have to identify it actually and figure out what it is. I've noticed we've got a rubber cap, so let's take a look at the sensor first. Whoops. Oh yeah. Love that. Now, uh, if we try the M42 male side of this, um, if I could ever thread it in. Yeah, so sure enough, that is M42 B male. Uh, and then we have the counterpart as we just discovered right there. If you want to use a male connection for your telescope, just cover this sensor back up. One other thing I'm noticing, unless I'm mistaken, is there is there appears to be no provision to adjust tilt on this camera. So um, that is a little bit of a markdown, I would say, because I nearly always find that on any camera, unless I've been very lucky, um, you always need to kind of adjust a little bit of tilt. So with this, you'd need to use a third party adapter, which is going to consume some of that back focal distance. Um, so maybe that's something that could be added on a later revision. Um, I don't know. But yeah, overall, very happy with the build quality. Let's get this thing plugged in now and just see how it is to connect to Nina as, uh, as its first time usage. Well, here we are. Let's get on with this initial test. I'm going to plug this in just as we go. So I've got it, my little power bank hooked up right here and hopefully you'll be able to see green. Not going to turn it on just yet deliberately. I want to see if we can power this thing solely through USB, just on the off chance that we can. Make a quick test so you can see the output currently zero. Nothing has connected up to my PC. So if I turn the power on now, I don't know if you just heard, it does need supplementary power to actually work. So uh, you've no chance of running this kind of if you like unpowered in the field and saving a little bit of a uh, little bit of juice that way. So I'm going to just show you Nina now. I'm going to scan sure enough straight away. We found on the native drivers. Connect up. Everything seems to be fine. We have are these default settings. High gain mode is on. Ultra mode. Or extra low read noise. That is on as a default. Uh, High full well mode and binning averages pixels are both off by default. The dew heater strength is at full by default. I'd probably run that a little bit less uh, myself. Gain and offset, I'm just going to leave those all at default. And so now we're going to take a look. The sensor's temperature is at 19.8 degrees. The ambient in this room right now is 15.3 degrees. I don't know if you that you can't can you sorry about this uh, and now i'm going to head off and start cooling so we're going to go for roughly 20 degrees from sensor temperature i think so we're going to tell it to cool to zero degrees that's near enough just a little bit over fans kicked in and it's starting to immediately up the cooler power and that temperature is dropping so the cooler is working this is of course very good news we're all the way down to nine degrees so far. So it's cooling extremely rapidly. Very, very aggressive uh, cooling curve. You, m I don't know if you may want to try and slow that down a little bit, a minimum duration on your cooling. Uh, as it is, I'm just going to see what it wants to do. And we'll let it settle a moment because it's just reached in the minuses ever so slightly. So it's kind of overshot with cooling a little bit. And at that, change the uh, camera scene for you a moment. Let's take a look at the power consumption together. And currently using 18 watts at 70% cooler power as I speak, 67%. So it's just dropping ever so slightly as the, uh, the sensor starts to stabilize in temperature because it has seriously overshot. We've gone to minus three, but now we're coming back up to. Uh, a good ambient temperature it seems so we'll stay on for just a moment with you i want to see what this actually does we notice the wattage is now dropping we're down to 12 watts by this time we're now at minus 1.9 1.7 so it's really starting to stabilize itself now um you wouldn't have this problem if you just increase the minimum duration of the uh, the cooling cycle just a little bit so we're soon gonna 
get things leveled out. Zero degrees or so, it's holding steady at about 41% cooler power or so. That is consuming 11 watts from the power bank. Um, one last thing I want to check now, how is it for just looping exposures? At bin one by one. So, uh, straight away. We seem to be getting an absolutely fine frame rate, just like you'd, you know, would expect from a full speed camera. Like this. Um, I would like to test it as well in sharp camp, but my sharp camp's out of date. So, uh, we'll have to save that for another day, when we've actually got some clear skies, ideally. And we are seeing that characteristic, beautiful, clean sensor on this thing as well, so uh, exciting times ahead, I would say. We'll take one more look at that cooling. 37% uh, power required. The output is about 9, 10 watts, it's just fluttering between on the power bank. That's about it, it isn't using too much power, so those of you who actually operate out in the field, maybe that's relevant information for you. It certainly seems like the cooler is capable of the advertised minus 42 degrees delta from ambient, I think. So I realize these are very brief tests. I just wanted to show you, you know, this thing actually get hooked up live, or as you've just seen, no drivers needed to be installed right there. It's natively supported by Nina. Um, so it's really great to see. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to hopefully get a chance to test this thing out and all the other stuff that's arrived in the observatory just recently uh, and i look forward to bringing you lots of um, kind of new interesting content soon so um yeah thank you for your support if you like this video at all please do leave a like on it for me it really does help me out and i will see you in the next one thank you for your support again it really does mean the world to me catch you in the next one guys clear skies <laughs>